feel like it's been a pretty big week of hail this uh, this last work week that we had here. Severe storms, as we know, sometimes release giant hailstones as they sweep through, right? And they cause massive damage, as we've seen over the last few days. Now, actually studying hail, it, it comes with some major headaches because, as we know, when the stones start to when the stones fall down to the ground, they will generally melt quite a bit before data can be collected. So NOAA's National Severe Storms Laboratory, the NSSL, they've been trying for years to understand the melting process. And a, a new study is using some advanced technology to finally get some answers. Ooh, I'm so excited about this one. I'm kind of a severe weather nut. So severe weather research right up our alley here. Research meteorologist Dr. Sean Wog joins us now to break down how this new technology works. So explain to me the project that we have going on here. Right, so the basic idea with this system is to try to understand those hailstones before they have a chance to hit the ground and break and melt, basically modify from what they actually looked like when they fell. And that's really important to know because that's what we're seeing on radar. That's what the NWS meteorologists are using to try to create those warnings and those products that we all rely on, right? So what we've done is we've built a truck-based system that is capable of doing just that. It uses high-speed cameras that run at 330 frames a second so that we can capture those stones in complete free fall before they have a chance to melt or break, and we can really get at what's going on with these types of stones on their way to the ground. Okay, so Dr. Rog, you're standing in front of the truck, and I'm just thinking about the fact that there's very expensive cameras and there's hailstones that are coming down at a very fast rate of speed. Where are these cameras located, and can you show us some of the tech on the truck? I can. So I'll actually walk you around behind the vehicle here, and if you look behind me, you can see in this big box that we have back here in the back, you can see both of the cameras that are kind of up there in the middle. Those cameras need to be protected. So that lens that you see in front of it is quarter inch thick polycarbonate. It is bullet resistant to like nine millimeters. So hail, no problem, we can handle that. Now the other fun thing about this system is in order to shoot cameras at that resolution, at that speed, we need a lot of light. So all eight of those LEDs that you see, if I turn all of those on, it puts about 30% more light out than the sun. So if you're standing behind this, you actually need eclipse glasses to look at the back of the truck. It is so intensely bright. Do you think wow. it's, do you think at some point like this could become like an operational thing that we could use? Because I know one of the biggest, at least something that always annoys me while I'm forecasting severe weather is trying to figure out how big the hail is that's going to hit the flipping ground during the storm. You know, like you can see, you know, there's some hu huge hailstones up there, but there's so many things going on with the vertical temperature profile. Where's zero C? Where's minus 20 C? All that kind of stuff. Do you think we can use this to get to a point where we could actually say, like, look, it's this many inches in diameter in this storm? Yeah, I think that's the point, right? Because we've all seen hail like this one. This is a 3D printed stone that is a replica of the Vivian, South Dakota record one. It's about seven inches from tip to tip. A lot of times you see stones like this that fall, that melt, or, you know, by the time you pick it up, maybe it's only five inches. And I say only five inches, like that's a, a small hailstone, right? <laughs> but when we have systems like this, we can see what those actually look like. And that creates our record a more accurate record so that we can really tell what fell and it creates a better way to predict and, and warn for those in the future. Uh, so, Doctor, don't have a lot of time left, but I do want to ask you in terms of the long term goals of Hail Cam and really just all the other hail focused research at NOAA's National Severe Storms Laboratory, what does that look like as we head into the next, you know, several years and decades? So, this system is the first and only of its kind. I mean, we're going to be collecting groundbreaking data with this, along with our cooperative institute partners that help run these types of research projects. I mean, we absolutely cannot do that without them. So whenever we're using a platform like this, the goal is to try to get better at those observations, answer the questions that we already have, and figure out new questions to ask, to push that research forward so that we can get better at predicting these, warning for these, and ultimately saving life and property. So I think in the next couple of years, what you're gonna see are improvements to this types of system, increases to the number of these types of systems that we have and then really just getting at how that hail falls in different parts of the country whenever it exists. Oh, this is so cool. I feel like we could talk about this all day. We're running out of time. Is it is it sad that I recognize the Vivian South Dakota hailstone there? Oh, I there? think we all do. I know. <laughs> I I'm, looked at that I was like, Vivian? I, I'm from Kansas originally, and I was bummed. That's I think that that hailstone was the one that beat our old record in Coffeeville. So, oh you know, <laughs> it's just how it goes. At this point. Dr. Sean Wog, <laughs> thanks a lot for joining us this morning. That was great stuff, man.